Welcome back for another video. It's time for the Gameweek Tips video as we look ahead to Gameweek 21. In this series we cover all the key information to help you arrive at better decisions, goal scorer odds, clean sheet odds, transfer trends, captaincy poll and more. And right before we get into it I'd like to take a brief moment to recommend the Fantasy Football Scout members area. I've been a member for almost 6 years, the tools I use every game week are the fixture ticker, the data tables and the player comparison. That said there's tons of tools so give it a try using the link below and see what you find useful, it also supports the channel. Thanks to Scout for supporting the channel and click the link below to try it now. So let's get into it and start with the anytime goal scorer odds and it's Haaland top with a 66% chance of scoring any time against Wolves. Disappointing back to back blanks against Chelsea Man United but you've got a backer player as good as Haaland and likewise back a squad as good as City's and a coach as good as Pep to turn it around. Liverpool and Chelsea face one another in Gameweek 21. Two struggling sides looking to turn it around and Salah's second on the goal scorer odds given a 48% chance. If you're a Salah owner the question is whether to hold him for this fixture or sell for someone like De Bruyne who does also have a double Gameweek 23. De Bruyne missed a training session which Pep has since said was due to personal reasons and he's back with the squad and he's available. It's a move that makes a lot of sense this game week with Man City massive favourites with that home fixture against Wolves. Darwin's status could be a deciding factor, Klopp confirmed that he is in contention to make the game and he has been given a 40% chance of scoring if he starts. Liverpool lined up with a front three of Oxlade Chamberlain, Gakpo and Salah for the Brighton loss but Darwin joining that front three you expect would have a big impact. There is a potential double game at 22 rumours for Man United and Leeds so rolling a transfer this week is sensible if you can as you've got the flexibility to look at options like Rodrigo if you want to. We might get a provisional announcement pre-deadline of the double game week so you could gamble on Leeds getting that double game week and then move for Rodrigo who has a 40% chance of scoring this game week home to Brentford before he faces Forrest in game week 22 who will be without Dean Henderson in goal currently injured. In isolation Leeds have great fixtures regardless so it's a differential to consider. Nketi narrowly misses out on the goal scorer odds, given a 34% chance of scoring in the home fixture against Man United. Since the restart, among all players, only Haaland has a higher non-penalty XG than Nketiah. 3.4% owned, he's one firmly on my radar. Onto the clean sheet odds for Gameweek 21, and Man City comfortably topped this week, given a 54.5% chance. They're up against Wolves, who have shown improvement under Lopetegui. That said they still have a league low 12 goals after 20 game weeks this season, next lowest is Everton, West Ham and Nottingham Forest all with 15 goals. The bookies odds are particularly useful when you've got two assets you're on the fence deciding which to start. For example last game week many were undecided between starting Kepa and Ward. The clean sheet odds favoured Kepa so if he started him well played, 9 points gained from that one decision. In the players to buy video this week we talked lots about the blank and double game weeks. Newcastle are favourites to have their game week 25 fixture postponed which could result in a blank. This game week Newcastle have a 42% chance of a clean sheet away to Crystal Palace. 11 clean sheets this season, Arsenal next highest of 9. It's actually 13 clean sheets for Trippier who was subbed off early on two occasions as Newcastle went on to concede which adds to the point of just how integral he's been. So there's a call to make on adding a second Newcastle defender. It's worth it but bear in mind the potential blank in 25 and weigh up how your bench would fare if both Newcastle, Man United, Brentford and Brighton were to blank. This is a useful graphic from Ben Krellin which shows the Gameweek 25 fixtures and what needs to happen for those fixtures to be postponed. Brighton have been catching many managers attention lately. Brighton's 3-0 win over Liverpool on Saturday was actually their first clean sheet in 8 matches under De Zerbi. However a trip to a Leicester side they've only scored once since the World Cup is appealing and the likes of Dunk for 4.7 mil and Estepinian for 4.5 mil are two to consider with Brighton given a 31.5% chance of a clean sheet. Colwell for 4.4 mil could be a bit risky with Webster back from injury. We'll talk more about the Brighton attackers later when we look at the transfer trends. Rock bottom this game because Wolves given a 7.5% chance of a clean sheet. If you've got Bueno you want him last on your bench. Wolves followed by Chelsea with a 17% chance away at Anfield. Just a 19% chance given to Man United for their trip to the Emirates. Something to bear in mind with Short a very popular pick currently. When looking at 50-50 calls on which defenders to start, one factor you need to be mindful of is attacking threat. We saw Shaw on centre back versus Man City which did reduce his threat. Ten Hag alluded to the fact that this decision was to match Haaland's physicality. The Arsenal attackers don't carry that same threat, therefore we might see Shaw back in left back which does boost his chance of an attacking return. Therefore, in other words, although Fulham are a couple percent likely on the clean sheet odds, you don't necessarily go start in the likes of Ream over Shaw. Casemiro picked up his fifth yellow card of the season against Crystal Palace however, he'll be a big miss for United in Gaming 21. Looks like a week you might get away with benching Shaw if you've got good enough cover. 
On to the top points projections for Gameweek 21 and Haaland's top predicted 7.6 points against Wolves. Comfortably top of the goal scorer odds as we saw as well. At the time of recording, Man City yet to host the Tottenham game, which could be a key game in how captaincy shapes up for Gemi 21. If Haaland blanks, then suddenly the likes of Kane are very tempting, or even De Bruyne if he has a great game while Haaland doesn't. Nonetheless, Haaland will be the most captain player once again. Kane's projected 5.6 points, followed closely by Saka with exactly 5. The road is laid out for those with three premiums at the moment, Haaland Kane and then one of De Bruyne, Bruno or Salah. If you have Seller, then you're tempted to sell him for one of the other premiums in Gemic 22 or 23. Long term it's hard to say whether the premium mids are worth it, perhaps from Gemic 24 we look to spread out the money around the team. Bowen narrowly makes the projections with 4.3 points for a home fixture against Everton. He's one to avoid though, it's startling how much West Ham and Bowen have dropped off this season. 7th place last season, currently 18th in the relegation zone, and Bowen with a 206 point season last year, currently at 60 points halfway. West Ham have just signed Danny Ings from Aston Villa for a reported fee of 15 million. Perhaps it'll be the spark they need to get back to winning ways. It goes onto the watch list for now. It could be one to consider from Gemic 25 onwards. Onto the top transfers, starting with which players are the most bought heading into Gemic 21. Tony sits top with 375,000 transfers. Is he one that we're overlooking? Third top scoring forward currently with 109 points. Up against Leeds next, Southampton and Crystal Palace in his next four. There is that cloud of uncertainty over him regarding the potential ban that currently there's no set day. Looking at the Arsenal mids over the season for expected goal involvement, in first is Erdegaard with 8.89 XGI, Saka second with 8.36 and Martinelli with exactly 8. It's incredible how Arteta's got them all performing consistently and you can't go wrong with any of them. Saka of course sets you back more at 8.1 mil but he does have penalty duties. We talked a bit about Brighton earlier and both Mitoma and March have also caught attention. March for 5.1 mil with a 19 point haul back in Gameweek 20 with returns of 11, 1 and 13 before that. Mitoma for 5 mil is another option as well. Trossard has been strongly linked with a transfer to Arsenal this window with personal terms reportedly agreed which would be good news particularly for Mitoma and Ferguson owners if the deal goes through. Trossard is the most sold player heading into Gameweek 21 so we'll talk more on that in the next segment. So it's Trostad who's the most sold player of 238,000 transfers out. He had fallen out of favour and despite that Brighton haven't been affected. As mentioned he is linked with a transfer to Arsenal this window with personal terms reportedly agreed. He's able to play anywhere across the front three, often deployed down the left at Brighton. Though this wouldn't make him a good pick at Arsenal if the transfer goes through. Realistically this could eat away at Martinelli and Saka's minutes the most if the signing goes through. Mitrovic is second with over 140,000 sales, with Martial potentially doubling in 22 or Nketiah in 23, plus there's Tony's current form, it looks like there are better options out there. The same can be said for Salah, with Bruno and De Bruyne potential replacements. It's a surprise to see Martinelli sold by over 100,000 managers. Moving on for Erdegaard seems too sideways judging by their data we discussed. If anything you want to consider doubling up for Gemi 23. To everyone's surprise, Cancelo got the start against Man United and didn't actually play bad at all. Those long term minutes are still a major question mark, so a downgrade is sensible and free up the money while you're at it. Amra's also dropped off since the break. He's created no big chances and he's taken just one big chance himself, three shots in the box in total. His 1.29 expected goal involvement ranks 24th among midfielders since the break. Time to sell. As far as non-penalty expected goal involvement since the break, there's some surprise names here. Bailey is third among midfielders with 1.63 xG, Barnes with 1.52 and Matoma with 1.5. No midfielder has taken more than Matoma's 10 shots in the box since. We'll finish up as always with the captain poll results, thanks to everyone who voted on the poll on Discord. The results are in and they are as follows. A lopsided week again with Haaland top of 88.5%. If you're feeling brave, these are the opportunities to bet elsewhere comes with a massive risk, but perhaps Kane's the next best option who has 2.7% of the vote in second. De Bruyne and Salah both get 2.2% followed by Rashford, 3.8% are voted for other. That wraps up the video, thanks for watching. I read every comment so drop one below, keen to hear your thoughts. Tomorrow's video will be the last before the deadline which will be the experts. Make sure you subscribe for that so you don't miss out. See you soon for the next one.